session. This is our regular in-person meeting for Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. Please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, um, looking out, is there anyone here from the public that has anything to say about anything that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, let's move on to item four, application for permit. Um, Abdullah Enterprises, LLC, proposed drive through addition at 1380 Silestine Highway, assessor's ID number 04-552. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Smith with CMG Environmental. I'm here with Kate Bednaz of Freshwater Wetland Services, the soil scientist, and uh, uh, the owner's uh, representatives are here today as well. Okay, so let's see, it's a new world in person, but still on the screen. So let me get orientated here. Okay. This is the same plan set that you folks have. Um, I think you're probably all getting familiar with the site. Um, we just felt uh, much more comfortable with an in-person type meeting than trying to do everything over Zoom. So uh, I looked back, it's been almost a year since we started this. Uh, so hopefully we're back to stay. Um, this drawing, and I believe you have the same drawings up that, that I'm looking at, mm -hmm. is that? Right, I have the existing conditions plan, hopefully. As built survey, yes. Okay, so um, I'm sure I can zoom in on this. Let me make it a little bigger. Okay, so this is the existing conditions, and uh, we were before you um, a couple years ago now um, in order you know, to get permission to construct the project that's out, out there, that's currently on the ground. And just a quick refresher, uh, we've got a 3,000 square foot convenience store. Uh, we've got five uh, pump islands underneath the canopy. And you may recall that as part of that project, uh, we uh, constructed a stormwater management system for this site where it had none. Uh, the site, half the site sheet flows over to this uh, detention basin over here. Uh, for some stormwater quality. Uh, it actually goes through a vegetated buffer. It's kind of a low, low impact development type uh, drainage system over here. Uh, and on the south side of the site, uh, where the rest of the stormwater uh, drains, we have a stormwater treatment unit. Uh, it's a storm scepter unit, uh, removes 80% uh, uh, plus TSS, and that pool down in the wetlands. Um, there's currently a steep slope. That's what all this, these contours are. That's a steep slope behind the station. And uh, the wetlands uh, that we're really here to discuss are here on the east side of the station, uh, down at the bottom of that steep slope. Um, so in addition to the stormwater management system for the previous project, it was a complete upgrade to the underground storage tank and piping system. It's all double walled, uh, meets or exceeds all the current DEP standards. So that was a, a tremendous environmental upgrade. Um, and we also, um, you have these dots, which you don't need to read, but these are all the trees and, uh, and shrubs that we planted uh, as part of the prior project. So our current proposal, um, let me see if I can, I want to go down to the next uh, sheet. There we are. Um, yeah, it's worth mentioning that uh, we'd always been considering a drive-through for the property. Uh, drive-through is a special permit, and at the time when we came in for the original approval, um, the applicant was under a deadline to remove and upgrade their uh, underground storage tanks. So we elected, you know, in order to meet the deadline with the DEEP for the tanks. Um, to set the site up for a future drive-through. Um, uh, and so it was constructed with the drive-through in mind uh, with the understanding we'd have to come before you um, for that approval. So the proposed project, what we're here for currently, is to construct the drive-through that would go behind the station. And I pointed out before that steep topography, uh, that slope down to the wetlands, that's the area where we're proposing to construct the drive-through. It's, it, we would be um, 
constructing it over that already uh, filled in area. And that was not in the wetlands, it bordered, it was right to the edge of the wetlands. Um, so in order to construct uh, the drive through, um, we have a temporary disturbance in this area uh, where in order to construct a section of retaining wall and to put in some um, aluminum culverts for flood storage, uh, we need to do a temporary disturbance just beyond our construction. And in this area right here, there's a swale currently that is a wetlands, and, and Kate could certainly uh, uh, talk about the character of the wetlands. But that area here, is, there's 390 square feet of permanent disturbance in the area of the drive through. In order to mitigate that, uh, we are proposing um, 400 square feet of wetlands mitigation, just extending the existing wetlands to the south in this area right here. Uh, we also can remove uh, the old plunge pool from the project just a few years back. We can get that riprap out of there and uh, restore that um, back to uh, wetlands. That's another 57 square feet. Um, at the uh, front end of the culverts, uh, we can create uh, some beneficial wetlands there as well. Uh, that would be another uh, 480 square feet uh, just, just inside the entrances of these culverts. And uh, per prior discussion, um, we're not uh, really counting it directly as wetlands mitigation, but we are proposing a stormwater quality wetlands. Um, the intent is for it to function as a wetlands um, and provide additional treatment to our stormwater runoff and uh, another benefit from my point of view, just as a civil engineer, is uh, the existing stormwater basin currently is draining a little slow. Uh, for my taste, I'd like it to drain out within 72 hours. And so this would also be an opportunity to uh, feed that wetlands, uh, the proposed stormwater quality wetlands from our existing basin. And I think it'll improve the function of that existing basin as well. Um, so that's a basic run through of the project. And uh, I think maybe Kate, you just want to uh, mention a few things uh, in your area of expertise. Thank you, Mark. Uh, for the record, Kate Bednaz, Freshwater Wetland Services, uh, a registered soil scientist and professional wetland scientist. And I'm really happy to be in front of you guys all today. This is like where it wasn't fun before, it's really fun now because it's been so long. So um, nice to see everybody's faces. So yeah, um, you know, Mark gave a really good introduction, um, and in looking at this plan, you know, um, has everybody been out to the site? Because we've been looking at this for so long, right? Good. And you know, when you're out there looking at it, we have this little narrow area of the wetlands at the base, and that's really where these wetlands have their quality. And then you have that slope where. Uh, the leads from the building down below, and that's where uh, the uh, drive throughs proposed. And what's nice about this plan is that that slope, um, while it was vegetated and had trees on it, it was all random fill from whatever project was in the neighborhood at the time. So it really wasn't the best of material, and that's part of why we have to go through and really provide the stability with the engineering because of the material that we had out there. Um, so by doing that, we have these nice galleys where we have these open spaces. So that's something new. So now we have this extra open area. It's going to be moist. Plants aren't going to grow there. I believe it was uh, 400. Uh, so we have the under the culvert, I think yeah, it's 400. It yeah. Feet. So we have 480 square feet under the culvert area, which will likely have wetland characteristics for the hydric soil. Vegetation-wise, I don't see that happening because we don't have the sunlight, maybe just on the edge. And then, so we're, you know, it's there, but we don't really have to count it, but I think it's a nice addition. Um, what we also have is taking out, because we have this, these galleys, we can now pull back that stormwater outfall and not have to go to the base of the slope so we don't cause erosion. Uh, we have this whole galley system where we can have it come out and have something to, to brace that erosive, erosive, erosive erosion potential. <laughs> I think you guys know where I was going with that. And, um, so we were able to make these nice adjustments. And then beyond that, we're going to need to work in the area. So we do have this area hatched here at the very bottom, which is a temporary disturbance area. So our permanent disturbance um, versus our 
permanent restoration, which doesn't include the area under the galleys, which is the wetland restoration areas, um, we're looking at a total of a one-to-one -one ratio for restoration. So, um, you know, what we have here is a, uh, the stream that runs through here and off the property, that one is um, a full-time running stream. It has all three characteristics. And then there's this little channel that came down before from here. This was just a, a bunch of runoff that wasn't getting treated. So going back out to the site previously, uh, before the construction was done, the best thing the site could have done for it is have the, all these stormwater management um, tools brought in, you know, the new catch basins, uh, oil water separators, all that good stuff, having detention basins, um, and now having this proposed stormwater quality wetland area, really just working on stormwater. Because if you drive down that road, um, what are the functions and values that those wetlands are providing? Uh, are we trying to get wildlife in there? Probably not the safest place to have a deer hanging out and then going running across the street. Um, birds, great. Amphibians, fantastic. Fish, yes, but I don't think that's the prime function of this wetland. Um, trying to control invasive species, this is next to a highway. There's Phragmites everywhere. Um, it's really a tough area to manage. Uh, trash flies off the highway. It's just, it's a really tough area. When you go and spend a lot of time in wetlands, I, this wetland I was kind of like, hi, what can we do for you? You know, it, it does, just by nature, it's in a rough spot. It's, it's hard, it's ha it has a hard time. So I think by us managing the stormwater, which we've already done, continuing to manage the stormwater, having this nice treatment train for the water that does come off the site to slowly work its way back into the system naturally like it did before. So by having the treatment train we talked about, you know, you have this basin here which is full of water now. It'll then drain to the uh, stormwater quality wetland area. And then it'll, it'll continue down uh, to the wetland area, which is how this worked in the past, but without any control and it was all erosion. Sediment was ending up at the bottom of the channel. So now we'll reduce the erosion, um, improving the stormwater quality, uh, still providing to have the uh, groundwater infiltration capabilities on the site, which is an important um, feature to have out there. And really it's water quality. I can't see how well else we can do a lot to improve this um, without really looking at the water quality, which is what we're doing. So. Um, we're going to be presenting to you at your next meeting, so I don't want to go too far into things, but I would love to have any questions that you may have for us. And um, if there's anything you want clarified or more detail on, uh, Mark and I would be happy to uh, elaborate. Any reaction questions now, or I think we're all set? You're all set with what you want to say? Yeah, if, uh, I agree. If we should have like, you should probably have some light questions, although. If there's a public hearing next meeting, um, well, I, I'll ask this now. Maybe okay. it'll help everyone. Uh, for your um, replication areas three and four, that you are replicating wetlands, now they're going to be right up against the, the, the stone wall, the culvert, and the and the retaining wall, right? At the top, right? Uh, areas three, number three and four. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, what sheet are you on? If uh, it, I don't know what we were just um, looking at when you were using the cursor. There. Yeah, the one you're on right now. Sure scroll, da scroll down. Am I going the right way for you? If you left it where it was, we were, <laughs> we were all set. Okay, I'm sorry. I That's thought okay. uh, we were looking for something there we go. different. There we go. Okay. All right, want me to shrink it just a little okay. bit? All right. Oh, that's okay. harder to read. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, Back work in progress. But there's the numbers. So now we All have right. the numbers over there. Sorry about that. All right, so. So numbers three and four, the, the, the replication. Gotcha. Wetland replications. These are right up against the stone wall, the retaining wall, right? There's no buffer. There's no review area around them. So this area here that we're looking at, yes. and also this area, yes. those are directly in the wetland because you can see, well, actually that's in the upland review area and we're creating the wetland. So so you have this. That's this proposed, number four proposed wetland replication right there. Yep. Right, okay. Yep. So it's right up to the stone wall. Right? Correct. And then in that stone wall will have, it won't be a stone wall because it has that, that galley system underneath. But there's really no buffer around it like we usually have a review area or anything. It's just. 
adjacent to the stone wall and then adjacent so to the natural wetland. It's susceptible to things blowing off of the, the drive through area and uh, accumulations of miscellany. And you just mentioned that it would get no sun. It would have wetland soils, but really no plantings because it really does not have good growing capabilities. Maybe. Uh, not that area. Not just that to so, so, so what I'm talking really about, so if you see the hatched area, sorry, just to make sure it's clear. See this hatched area that's underneath the drive through That's the area I was speaking about. This area that's out, it's going to have exposure. It's going to have vegetation. It's going to turn right into a natural wetland. Okay. So um, just yeah. to be clear on those two different areas. All right, but it, it still has no buffer around Correct. it? Correct. Um, and the other thing so for what you mentioned is that there's going to be a guard uh, fence that's going to be put up. And I think with what's there, because I was out at the site beforehand, I mean, people could back up dump trucks with whatever they wanted. So that's been fixed, um, which is nice out there so that, you know, in the middle of the night somebody can't just get rid of their mattress, which is one of the things that it was down there in, in the wetland when you work. Um, and then with this scenario, by putting the fence up, you know, you have the blowover from the parking lot. You can also have a blowover from there. I know we're getting closer, but we did put measures in place to prevent that trash from blowing in, protecting the, the garbage area. Um, I don't know what we can do about the highway and the bottles that end up down there, but we can do whatever we can for our site. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, Commissioner Liska, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Commissioner Schweitzer? Um, can you take a harder look at your typical section? I am still having issues with that. You're showing 22 feet for your drive space. I'm on sheet uh, C2.0. Yep. Okay. You're showing 22 feet. Yep. I'm just wondering, you, you have a curb within that, so that can't be counted as part of your drive space. And then you're going up to the face of the guardrail post, so your your blocks and your railing is sticking out. So that's taking more space away from you. I'm concerned you're losing like 15 inches plus or minus that you're going to have to extend further into the wetland to get your required 22 feet. No, well, certainly on the detail for on the right hand side, that guardrail detail could be changed so that you don't lose any space. That can be anchored to the structure. So that wouldn't change. You know, you're showing it anchored to the structure, but you're showing your rail out into what right. you're Right, I under, and, right. That's, this isn't actually a, you could certainly have a design where it's also anchored to the structure and not within the 22 feet. So you're pushing out further then? No, you would still be, your, your footprint, your culvert, no matter what we do, the culvert, here will not need to change. That wouldn't need to change. So even if we um, did something with the slab at the top uh, that just went, you know, that six inches or so extra that you're talking about, because we just don't want to be, um, there are a number of different details, like on the inside, you, you essentially just don't want anyone to be rubbing on the building. Um, we're trying to make this as compact as we can um, the town has a requirement for a certain bypass width, so. Um, and that's what's got me concerned, because if all of a sudden you start losing these inches, you're pushing further out into the wetland. And will you be able to put a guide rail out there, or you can have to put up a parapet? The, uh, I understand what you're saying, and I, I certainly uh, wouldn't think that the footprint down at the bottom would have to change. Um, strictly speaking, if, um, if we were told, well, you know, you can't have a curb or a guardrail within the 22 feet, that would probably cause a, a cantilever on the top of, I think you, you do some plus and minuses, but maybe eight inches beyond where we're showing it right now. I don't think it would necessarily result in any change down in the, um, in the bottom area, but we are talking a, a few inches. Uh, we could certainly revisit that and firm up that detail uh, for the next meeting. Well, that, that's going to be a concern of mine. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to see a section at the retaining wall so we can understand what that is going to look like. Yeah, the section through, uh, you know, somewhere through here and then maybe again through here. It, it can be a typical one, but I'd just like to see something. Yep. Please. Thank you. Anything else? I'm all set. Okay. Commissioner Stevens. 
Sure. <laughs> um, probably my biggest issue is um, the restoration, um, the creation and the restoration. If we're just doing a one-to-one -one, um, you know, mitigation, I think some of the other commissioners usually like to see something a little bit more like you know, the best thing would be like two, two or three to one. Um, I understand the, the quality of the wetlands isn't the highest and all that. Um, the, and then also, I know you're, you're not really including that proposed stormwater quality wetland area, but that's also additional area. Um, but it is mainly stormwater quality because it looks like the elevation you have there is that like 25 feet and a lot of the wetlands is down. Well, that finger goes up to what, 23 or something? Um, but a lot of the wetlands is, is down much lower, like what, 20 feet or something elevation? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't even know how much like natural water, like hydrology you're gonna get in there other than the storm water going into that, right? From the larger basin. So when I was out there before anything was, any basins were there. Mm -hmm. What would happen is the water would just come off the neighboring site, go down, create that channel, and then erode its way down and just create erosion and settle at the base. So uh, what we've seen though by having a, um, by the layer being somewhat impermeable up there, um, because the soils are very variable because of the fill over the years, mm -hmm. um, that it will have that perch capability to have time for infiltration. So. You know, and, and it comes to, you know, we looked really hard at where else we could create wetlands. Mm -hmm. And in this scenario, if you look at the, you know, the contours here, if we come in here to try to do anything, I don't think we're going to be helping anything. You know, we have fully grown trees all around this whole area here. So I was very much not wanting to come down into this area whatsoever. Um, we could try to extend something. Well, that's rating might be tough, but we could try. I was going to suggest, like, maybe not where it's the steepest slopes on the eastern, far eastern side of the site, but maybe, mm -hmm. maybe something. I mean, you're already doing, you know, um, some activities around through the drive through there. I would, I, yeah, I so this area here, I potentially. would think it wouldn't be too hard to just get the machine over there, and maybe you could create some more wetland in there. Yeah, we'll have to look with Mark to see what the grades are when we do that and make sure things stay stable. Because then uh, at least you have some, some natural hydrology. Mm -hmm. um, whereas what's going into your proposed stormwater quality wetlands area number one is... Yeah, and so, you know, I think with this one, it's a, cre it's a creative thought process, at least for me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have 400 square feet of actual wetlands that will be replicated down at the base that aren't there now. Um, we've gone in there, we've enhanced the actual wetland with plantings already and they've taken well and they're doing well down at the bottom. It was just kind of a, a sand hole because of the fact that the sand that washes off the highways collects in a little eddy there as well as the sand that was coming down off of that erosion. Then you add the stormwater quality wetland. Well, we're not counting that as a wetland replication, but it's going to have some functions that a wetland would have, um, but primary for stormwater. And then when you look at the galley system, you know, so we have all these areas that are going to pr provide functions, but not on a full wetland scale. But on a full wetland scale, we do have one-to-one. -one. So we do meet the criteria. And on a site like this, I don't always know if more wetlands are better, if, if it's more important to control the use of the site, you know, make fences maybe a little bit higher, really try to create the site so the site contains itself away from the wetlands. Um, so, you know, as you can see, we've taken every creative approach and we will look into that, right. that area there. I think it's next to uh, Butterfly, WA 116 and 115. So we'll, we'll look at that little stretch right there, um, unless you had another area in mind that is. Um, I mean, it, you just, there's really not much extra area here. No, there's not. That's kind of the problem. Yeah, um, so here we so go. So, yeah, that would be just my only comments would be that that, you know, the area one wetland you know, that you're going to create really is just for storm drainage. Um, so it's really not really a... Um, yeah, it's just nice to talk about. Yeah, yeah it's I really get not you. really a good mitigation thing. Um, and like I said, the elevation is kind of higher than, than where the natural wetlands are. So I don't, 
think that that would really work hydraulic, hydrology wise. Um, so yeah, if you could do something maybe on the eastern side of the site to, to get some more mitigation, that would probably be good for me. No problem. Um, and I'm also glad that you're now showing the, the full original wetland um, before the you know, other improvements are done on the site, because I know we were going back and forth on that in the past. Um, so you show your existing conditions, but you also show that other wetland that used to be there. So happy to see that. Um, and I do like that you're, I think you've pretty much solved the, the flood storage issue with your culverts. Um, have you cleaned out any of that rubbish that was on those side slopes that used to be there like 10 years ago? Yeah, um, prior to uh, and in conjunction with the last construction, yeah, they spent a lot of time down there <laughs> hauling all that stuff out. I mean, last time I was down there anyway, I, there were no tires, no shopping carts, no mattresses, no old signs. Right. Um, it was cleaned up a lot. When I, when I flagged the wetlands at the Wendy's site mm -hmm. next door, there was tremendous stuff all down in that swale. Yeah. yeah. So that's all I got. Commissioner Zach? No, I'm all set, thank you. Commissioner Whelan? I have a, just refresh me that, why are we here? You uh, said you've always planned to have a drive through. Why wasn't this site constructed so that we wouldn't have to intrude into the wetlands when you initially did the first phase? Well, like I, The state has a regulation where your tanks need to be removed at 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so they were against that deadline. And the reconstruction of the station uh, was basically a, you know, a site plan review, didn't need a special permit. So we elected at that time to uh, go through that permit process so that the station could be built uh, and uh, still keep the DEEP happy. Um, Right now, if from the, the cur front curb at the front of the site out there by, well, actually, I forgot I can point. <laughs> um, yeah, so this curb line here mm -hmm. to the center line of the pumps is 35 feet. From the center line of the pumps to the sidewalk is 35 feet. And that is what I use, and I've done probably a couple hundred gas stations, um, it just from observing in the field, uh, working for shell oil and designing stations that's the number i don't go closer than <laughs> so we put the um, building as far forward as we could um, and uh, there are just certain uh, practical realities to the economics of these things and uh, we made the store um, 3,000 square feet which is really about as small as you can get by with uh, viable these days. What and size was the prior store? Uh, it was smaller, it and was. that's why it had to go. <laughs> um, it was smaller. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, that yeah. you created this issue that you're here for. You know, that's maybe you're making the size the store was, you would have had the extra room behind it for the drive through Well, you know, once again, I there uh, in order for improvements to be done at all, they have to be you know, they have to be viable. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is really, I think, as compact as, uh, as you can really practically do. Um, and the, I don't have it, uh, the prior survey with me, but um, I believe we, we were very close to what was the back of the old building uh, with this building. Um, and so, uh, and also you can see what we did with local, we, you know, we put the entrance over here so we could get a nice tight radii so that the um, cars would be behind the building. Normally, optimum, you know, optimum, and, and we had discussions about this. Um, this is where you really want your drive-through window, right here on the side, but that would have taken a big swing uh, in order to get there, so um, the, you know, the alternate design in order to keep everything as compact as we possibly could was to put the drive-through window on the back of the building. 
Um, so that's what we did, and that's why we um, you know, located the dumpster so we could get around it and uh, with a radii there. So um, we, that was definitely a consideration, you know, is how can we make this as compact as possible. We actually originally had a 12-foot uh, lane, but um, with the town requirement for a bypass, uh, we had to push it out, so um, to the minimum. And um, yeah, so this was sort of the, the net design that we felt was as compact as we could go. Um, and also, I'm just going to mention just one more time, um, that area uh, where the drive-through was going, um, I'll master this yet, that's a fill, you know, that's the fill slope where, um, you know, here's the wetlands line. And so that drive-through is on this already previously man-made filled slope. And uh, we're just, just towing up against that that wetlands line, and that's why we're offering, uh, you know, the creating that 400 square feet of new wetlands to offset that. So uh, we feel we've really kept that disturbance to the absolute minimum, and uh, and still be able to have a viable uh, operation. Thank you. All set. Mm -hmm. Just one easy question: How I can't make it out from the maps? How? much of a difference is there between the call it the mean water line and the bottom of the culverts now how high up above is yeah they'll where you hit the wetland storage yeah uh actually i'm not, let me see i'm not 100 percent sure what uh, the question is but the the wetlands uh, flags are here right around 20 it looks like okay yeah and uh I, you know where the bottom of our culverts the open part right. is going to be right there that okay so it is come and go right out of so it. if there's any increase it's immediately going in there yeah and okay. and um, as was mentioned we uh, we provided calculations uh, and we sized these so that in a hundred year storm event we are not displacing any flood storage yeah yeah no I was just thinking in terms of like you said there's no sunlight there's going to be no plants in there but I'm just wondering every time we get a rainstorm it's going to get yeah, wet the, in there or the soil in the culverts is going to be at the same elevation as the adjacent wetlands great yeah. okay thanks all right does anyone have anything else to add um, that they want to see or hear about for next month's presentation all right so I'm looking for a motion let's a motion that we table this schedule the public hearing Make a motion to schedule public hearing for Thank you. Abdul Enterprises LLC proposed drive through addition at 1380 Southstein Highway for the uh, December meeting. Second. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of tabling this until next month and having a public hearing? Aye. 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 We're all in agreement. And um, I should note that Commissioner Liska is a voting member tonight. So it's unanimous. We'll see you next month. Um, Thank you. Hopefully there will be a lot of people that from the community that will have some input. Okay. Nice, nice to see you all in person. <laughs>
you can vote on it. If 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 not, we can you know change it any which way you you like. Okay. Does anyone on the commission have a conflicting date or issue with any of the dates as posted? Um, seeing none, I'd like a motion to accept these as the schedule for next year. I'll make a motion to accept the. Um, Open Space and Conservation Commission uh, schedule meeting schedule for 2022 as written. Second. Any second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. There's no opposed. All right. We have a schedule for next year, folks. All right. Um, B. Uh, Mr. Havaz um, Mirza proposed planning schedule for the conservation easement area to the rear of 10 Ramble Wood Drive. Yeah, so Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, uh, as you recall, uh, last year, um, uh, Mr. Myrna, Mirza was uh, in front of this committee. Uh, he did get um, approved uh, for a plan to, to do the plantings as this commission requested. Uh, there was there was a condition of, of the approval that the plantings be done prior to um, November 15th. The plantings were done. We took, um, we went out to the site. Uh, the staff went out to the site. We took pictures. There's still uh, some cleanup to do out there, as reflected in these pictures. Uh, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna uh, meet up with him and um, make sure that he cleans up uh, whatever needs to be cleaned up on the site, uh, and hope that that nature um, also helps us out, fills the rest of the area. Um, and, and makes it look like, um, again, like uh, as close to where it was before. But it's going to take it's going to take some time. If if any of the plantings that were planted uh, are to fail, uh, he is to replant those plantings again until until they take. Okay, Bob, I have a question for you um, of the on the photographs. The second page two. There's a looks like a wood pile or something. Yeah, is yeah. that in the conservation easement? Y yes, it is. There is, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. Anything that is in back of the wall that is, I, I want to say, on the on the uh, on, on the um, that will be on the east side of the of the, of the property that is within the easement will will pretty much have to come out. Yeah, it was my question: Is uh, are you allowed to have a wood pile in the easement? We, we you know, we we dealt with uh, we spend in <laughs> we spend quite a bit of time on this property, and we'd like it to be uh, just basically. I don't want to say spotless, but you know, to to the satisfaction of the commission and also the staff. So, um, okay. no, no wood pile. Bob, well, I have a question on that same picture. What are those? They look like they're pipes. There is, there is, uh, there's some pipes there. There's some, uh, some metal uh, that was there that was actually fished out from the, from, from uh, actually from the conservation easement. There is some, some masonry stuff um, also. Um, uh, there is uh, a, a lot of stuff that basically do not belong uh, within that conservation easement that has to be that has to be um, taken away. Are we giving him a deadline as to when he needs to get this cleaned up by? We we have not. Uh, we are going to be talking to him to uh, to make sure that that's uh, that, that's out of there. Okay. Yeah, I think maybe we should yeah. Yeah. put some yeah. kind of deadline yeah. on it, or else yeah, we, it, they'll just be pushing it off and we'll, pushing we'll, it off. We're gonna take it out. Of, haven't taken out a ESIP uh, okay. before the snow flies. Basically, yeah. that's, okay. that's thank you. Know. All right. Um, C. Plan of Conservation and Development. The Plan Implementation Committee. Anything new, Mr. Chairman? We didn't have a meeting in the past two months. Okay. All right. So D. Uh, status report. Various projects. Yes. Yeah, so, so, um, so the projects that we have um, that we've been bringing you up to speed on, uh, basically, there's no change. Uh, the foundry, there's no change on that. Uh, there's is the foundry still with the state. They still intend to um, to go ahead with the project. As you know, the the um, the permit <laughs> is now good to. Um, I think it's 2031, as I recall. 2032. You know, 32, what have you, is is uh, is good for for a long, long time. Uh, the former landfill, um, uh, there's still no change on that. Um, another project that came actually before the staff, and uh, not just myself, but also the the uh, land use staff, was the uh, former Ames headquarters. And I did give you a copy of the of what is being proposed. Actually, that came in today. 
the reason why you have a copy of it was that, um, well, basically for, for, for your own uh, info. And also uh, because there's a wetlands uh, to the, uh, I want to say to the northeast corner of that property uh, that, that uh, they have an upland review area uh, to it. Uh, it does, uh, it goes into the site, but there's no, uh, there is no uh, activity. Uh, uh, within that, uh, the open review area. So we reviewed it, we met with them, and we basically, um, um, you know, um, are, are letting them go through planning and zoning. Um, the planning and zoning has uh, basically scheduled a public hearing on this for December 1st, uh, which is uh, three weeks away. So um, uh, all of the abortus within 500 feet will get notices. And uh, stay tuned. Um, um, any any questions on that? <laughs> <laughs> we could be here all night. Um, no. um, all right. What else? Just those three projects. Everything else? Those those three projects. There is another project here that came in as part of a, a letter of correspondence, and that was the they they used to call it the Donkey Kong project, which is in Cromwell. Uh, actually, it's called the Highlands uh, project, which is. Um, a distribution center that was um, that is being uh, proposed uh, in the town of Cromwell, but is abutting also uh, within 500 feet of the town of Rocky Hill. So uh, I gave you a copy. Uh, I sent a copy to you. I also gave you a copy, hard copy uh, of it, so you can be informed as to what's going on. And maybe Sandy can help me out with uh, with the with the status of it. Um, you know, my our, our concern as staff. Environmentally speaking, is the fact that that part of this uh, proposal is a big proposal, by the way. It's, uh, it's the, the warehouse is uh, over a million square feet. Uh, so, just to give you an idea of what a million square feet uh, is on, on one level, it's about 23 acres. So, just the building alone is 23 acres, plus you know the other 400 and some parking spaces for staff, uh, 500 uh, spaces for uh, trailers, and and uh, um, you know the docking stations and what have you. So, so it's 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 very very. Uh, even though it's a large piece of property, uh, this proposal is a huge pro um, proposal. Uh, so, environmentally speaking, we are concerned. Um, I was concerned with uh, with the fact that uh, part of this proposal is within the Dividend Brook watershed. So, even though it's in Cromwell, that uh, runoff goes uh, towards Rocky Hill. Uh, into Dividend Brook and then, of course, into the Connecticut River. So we are, you know, we are looking at it. We are, um, I've been um, talking somewhat with the environmentalists on this uh, on this job to make sure that 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 whatever is being proposed is not adversely affecting uh, the uh, 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 the town of Rocky Hill and Dividend Brook in any way. Through, uh, through uh, so Can I just ask Bob a quick question. Um, it looks like they're proposing 18,000 feet of filling, so they're going to need to get federal permits. They need for that? to exactly. They need to get not only, as I see it, not only local permits, uh, but also a state DEP, uh, the, the 401, uh, um, um, somewhat a quality permit, and also a 404 permit. I, as did I, they get you know. the local permits first, and then the federal, they, they, or do they, they do? do they have to get the local permit. permits first, and then move on to the. Um, to the to the uh, water quality certificate and to the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, I think as you see it, there is a vernal pool mm. uh, that uh, uh, perhaps an irrigation pond uh, uh, that is acting as a vernal pool that is uh, is quite large. It's I mean 18,000 square feet. Yeah, it's big. big. That's big. It's big. Mm. You know, and vernal pools uh, have a different uh, criteria than, than, than uh, other wetlands and water courses. Uh, as, as you know, we have a 100-foot upland review area well where, uh, where vernal pools can be anywhere from 300 to 700 uh, feet around it that has to be studied. So um, uh, my, uh, my understanding is that the first public hearing was conducted there, Sandy, and then there's another one. Yeah, I, I went to the public hearing, um, and it was really interesting as a commissioner what we're used to doing and our, our participation, there was an overflow crowd of citizens. Uh, they had, if you've been to Cr Cr 
Cromwell Town Hall, it's got a big open foyer, and they had many seats, 50 seats set up were on the level, the first level, then upstairs is the council room, and that was filled. Uh, what, and, and I'm just reporting facts. I'm not trying to cast a judgment on this, but only three commissioners had questions on something of this size. Um, one was not even questions. It was, that's nice that you moved the vernal pool. That's <laughs> nice that you put the driveway over there. End of. Uh, two other commissioners had questions. It, it was, you know, it was amazing. And then um, the citizens were amazing. They were really good. There had to be 20 people who got up and spoke really well to environmental issues, to air quality, to water quality. Um, and they were very careful to stay away from traffic and anything that, you know, we run into that where people hit us with traffic and things mm -hmm. that are planning and zoning. They stayed on the mark. Uh, and I, it was, and they, they targeted the vernal pool, for instance, and they kept saying, well, you know, it was the least destructive wetlands to the wetlands, because there are other wetlands we're trying to save. But uh, I really, uh, the, the commissioners were so calm about it that I don't have a whole lot of hope. I, it's a huge, it's a huge tax base, I'm sure. It's a huge do, plus do you know if there's going to be any third party review or like a review by the conservation? That board? never came up. That nobody asked questions. It was amazing. There, there is going to be, I, they, I, they hadn't finished bringing it to staff, to engineers. So this public hearing didn't tie things up. There's more. That, that might be something that we might want to recognize. Have the, what is it, the middle sex or whatever? Well, if, if, if I was, if we were, if this commission had something like this in front of, of you guys, you guys would definitely get not only the the, uh, the district involved, but also a third party review because they might look at, uh, after the best interests of the town. They might not uh, take so any suggestions from us seriously, but maybe if the if we recommended to have that, you know, that uh, county district and yeah. review. Yeah. You know, if, if if you like, I mean, I discussed it with uh, with other people in town. So if if you like, uh, you know, we can we can express. Uh, uh, not all, n may, perhaps not a letter of concern, but a letter of, of, of uh, uh, you know, ask, well, uh, perhaps a letter asking, asking the, um, Cranwell to maybe um, uh, have other people study the proposal and come up with recommendations. Yeah. You know, so. I uh, think that's fair enough. You know, in the best interest of the, of the Rocky Hill community, because we, we could be affected. Uh, not to say that we are affected, but we could be affected by this proposal. Yeah. So it's in the it's in the drainage basin that goes into the town. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's part of the uh, Dividend Brook watershed. Right. That's that goes in the whole town. Mm -hmm. Right, because that goes to Dividend Pond and out. And then into right. the um, river. That's a good argument. Is it within our scope of us to ask them to have a better have a study or a better study done of what would happen with the Dividend Brook outflow? We, we, can we ask? We, 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 we can ask. I mean, we can always send the letter. We can always send the letter, um, um, you know, with, with, uh, with the concerns okay. um, uh, to have other people involved. I'm not sure who they have involved. Like I said, I do not know how Cromwell works. I do know that that has something like this been in front of you. You guys will be asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. There will be, uh, you know, um, reports done by others. And, and a third party review because it's in the regulations that, that can, that can um, maybe look at this proposal with a different set of eyes, yeah. you know? Uh, but again, uh, it's, it's Cromwell, so I really, mm -hmm. I really couldn't. Andy, you know. based on your observation, how did you, what kind of vibe did you get from the residents that did speak or were there for or against or They're mixed? They're all heartbroken. The, if you know yeah. Beer Street, um, yep. it, that's a beautiful, quiet street. It looks yeah. out on the land. Every one of them, and an interesting piece is there are apparently it's a very high water table. And they said, our sump pumps go all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And then they were very concerned about the outflow from the roofs, the roofs of the building, and um, what that's going to do on anything beyond the normal. And what's normal? We're talking about a hundred year flood. I mean, we've had two of them this year. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, and, and somebody had a very good calculation on one inch of rain equals this much of outflow, and then you m multiply it. I didn't have a lot of faith that right. they were, um, that it made a difference. And that's why I would love, I wish I knew somebody in Cromwell, I wish I knew somebody on Beer Street, I'd say, you know, why don't consider requesting this, you know, third party review uh, of the property. Do we know well, when the next public hearing is? They meet on the first Wednesday of the month. I think it's the first also, December 1st also. 
I think, right? That's the, the first is on. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think so. I think it's the first Wednesday of the month is December yeah. 1st. Yes. But, you know, as, as Scott suggested, we, we, you know, you as a commission can, 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 um, do we have to make can a spread those concerns uh, yeah. and, and have uh, send a letter on, on, on behalf of the town of Rocky Hill by, by Todd expressing, uh, you know, concerns um, with, uh, um, you know, um, degradation of, of, of perhaps the, the dividend brook watershed uh, and how that's going to be impacted. Least have the middle sex, um, and so and and, and so yes, uh, yeah, and so yes that review. at least, uh, yeah. or, you know, uh, at the very minimum, yeah. or a third party review. I mean, you know, yeah. that's, what that's is what the, the middle sex? What's the name of it? The right middle. It's called the Connecticut Coastal, Coastal yeah. uh, Connecticut Conservation Coastal. District. She yeah, did a, she did a presentation. They've done it for us. For yeah. Us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Wendy. And uh, Kelly, Kelly we, Stern. At least we would know that's like a legitimate, like yeah. third party yeah. review, and not just some other consultant that they hired. Yeah. But I mean, for, but but uh, again, f uh, for something this big here, y you know, you you will be. Again, this is not in front of you, but you'll be um, going into um, asking the the applicant to to uh, cough off some monies, so we can actually hire, not only the district because the district is free, but also a, a consultant that can also review this project here and look at it from with a you know different set of eyes but that's part of uh, their due diligence too i you know I, yeah, every town is different so i'm not, <laughs> yeah, you know uh, i hope that they're not looking at it from the from the, the, the tax the tax <laughs> base standpoint base, yeah. you know so uh, i mean there'll be other issues coming up uh, you know as, as sandy said there's this is just the first meeting with the environmental uh, entities uh, there'll be planning and zoning hearings uh, also with the town of Cromwell, you know, with traffic, it's a big deal. Even though we don't, we don't get into the traffic. But I mean, uh, 500 trailers, a lot of trailers. Oh, that's <laughs> you horrible. Know? And you know when where? You down that well, going through the well, you know where they're going to end up at, right? Yeah, they're going to be coming right through our town too. It's going to be Rocky <laughs> Hill, exit 23. Yeah. Yep. So. West Street so, and Cromwell Ave is going to be a nightmare. They're Worse not going to go on Route now. 9 and then come back into 91. They're they're going to they're gonna <laughs> use. They're going to come. Come north on Cromwell Avenue and yeah. and, and, and utilize and it. If it may, I, Bob, when we use the when we've used the Connecticut Coastal Conservation District, the applicant pays the fee. If we say the, the, we the, want to use that, the district is free. Oh, the, the district, district, district is, free. is free of charge. Uh, okay. But you know there is, and I'm not sure if they have it in the regulations. I probably should look at the regulations a little closely, where uh, where they can ask uh, any. Uh, maybe they have a consultant uh, uh, on board that can, you know, that can provide a review uh, at charge, and the charge is paid by the developer. All right. So, I, picking up from this, we have two requests for the town of Cromwell to look into what's going to be out, how this is going to change dividend brook flowing into Rocky Hill, and having the conservation district look at this basically for the same reason, um, but a suggestion that they use them. So should we be formal about this and make a motion that we send a letter that we all, so that we all agree on it? This might be, this might be included in what you already said, but I'd be really interested specifically to see a stormwater drainage plan on, mm -hmm. on how, how all of the rainwater from the roof and from the parking lots is going to go into catch basins and where that's mm -hmm. flowing. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. If it's flowing to the wetland, is it going to be treated? All that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, if, if you look where their stormwater management feature is at the lower left of the building, it's tiny compared to the building. Right. <laughs> you I, know, you get two or three inches of rain, and that's a tenth the size of the building. Mm -hmm. That could be two and a half, three feet of water from a good rainstorm. Yeah, and you know. it doesn't say what's going into it. Right. Yeah, but that's a, that's a great point. That's something that, that, that you know, and we didn't have uh, um, access to a stormwater management plan. I didn't have access to, um, to um, a wetlands assessment study, which is, you know, should be part of this uh, proposal. Uh, I know okay. I think especially it was especially, being, especially was like you were alluding to the fact that it's a vernal pool that they're filling into, which is a much more sensitive type of wetland than just your, like, just the building well. is going on top of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. And they're creating another one up in that, you know, the the southern here in that corner. It's that's a creation. 
but they're only going yeah, they're, area they're, for they're the moving vernal the, pool. They're moving the vernal pool, basically. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they're going, uh, you know, I can't believe they're, it's like they're going so they're over. Not, they're not even and they're right adjacent to other vernal pools. I mean, they're doing enhancement. That Yeah. I guess that counts for something, but they're not even doing like a two-for-one. Mm -mm. I, I think part, part of this, so, so you know, uh, the soils there, I, I think you, uh, they're doing a lot of underground uh, uh, stormwater uh, recharge, okay. which is good because the soils uh, are good for that. But in terms of hydrology, you know, you have to also be careful with that because you're taking probably about 40 acres mm -hmm. of paved mm -hmm. um, surface and then, you know, you, you don't want to cut off all of it from a watershed because you might cause uh, impact downstream also. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's not good to have too much water, but it's not good to have too too little water either. You know, so, you, so they have to, uh, they have to. Uh, uh, so, so basically we haven't been provided with any kind of hydrology study. We don't have any um, wetland assessments that might show rare and endangered species or whatever, you know, that could be in this vernal pool. Um, so we really don't have a lot of information to really evaluate this at all. Yeah, but also keep in mind that this is Cromwell, not us. Right, but, but, if, the, it goes, but if it goes right. into our watershed, yeah. right. then it could affect us. Well, right. exactly. And, 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 you know, and, and again, let me just go back to the reasons why uh, they, they, you know, you're within 500 feet and they informed us. is because if we have questions and concerns, we should voice them. Right, right. And and right. So, that's that's so, what we're hashing you, out, right? And if you if you want to do that formally and and, yes. and, and make a motion to, to right, well, that that's what we're hashing out right now. What a letter to them? What uh, can we put into a letter addressed to them? Fine. So, if anyone's ready to make a motion to write a letter to the town of Cromwell's, where are they called? Um, they're. Um, I think it's the wetlands agency. Yeah, yeah I wetlands. think it's wetlands and. Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Agency. Right. So if anyone's ready to make a motion of the things we want to include in the letter to the Town of Cromwell's um, Inland Wetlands Commission, I'm all, I'm all ears for a motion. Okay. You want me to go for it? Go okay. for it, Scott. All right. I make a motion that we uh, drop a letter of our concerns as the commission possibly even have town staff review it or put in some input into it, um, that there be, I guess, a hydrology study done or whatever with the storm drainage at least and all that information um, looked into. And if it's going to go into our drainage basin that goes into Rocky Hill, um, a wetland assessment study of the, the wetland that's being filled in. Um, and then also have the, is it the Connecticut Coastal Conservation District? Yeah. Um, recommend that they do a review so that we have some kind of third party review information that we can see what's going on and, and what are the possible effects that it could have to the wetlands within the 500 foot area, I guess, we're supposed to be looking at? Or Is that on the internet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and, and or if it could, you know, affect the, you know, within the drainage basin that goes into Rocky Hill. Yeah. In fact, other, you know, is it Dividend Brook or? Um, yeah, it's Dividend Brook that Brooke becomes Dividend Brook. have Brooke. effects on that. Yeah. Could I add to that? Yes, an amendment would be welcome. <laughs> I'd like to add an amendment that we receive copies of all of the drawings that are on the cover page, especially the grading and drainage plan that we didn't receive. It is listed that they've done one. Okay. Um, anyone want to um, second the motion to send the letter? It, may I make another friendly amendment? Sh certainly. Can we make sure to, to add the word um, independent review? So they don't, because they have a soil scientist and he's done all this, but somehow fit independent into there? Thank you. Anyone else with any amendments? All right, I'll, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a second. No second. Okay, all those in favor of sending a letter to the town of Cromwell, aye. 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 Anyone opposed? I think that's unanimous. Okay. All right, Bob. Um, I'll draft it and um, I'll have you take a look at it. Okay, great. great.
Yeah, and I'm going to want to copy in case I want to go to the next meeting that they have in Cromwell. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, uh, that was status reports. Op all right. Um, open space. Any Anything on open space? I guess this is where I'll talk about the Greenway. Okay. Yeah, let's hear about the Greenway. As you may remember, a little backstory. The, the Connecticut Deep has a Greenway Commission. They're trying to connect towns throughout the state by open spaces, historical spaces. The generic term is Greenway. We, uh, Weathersfield has a Greenway um, accepted that runs through the meadows. We proposed something through the meadows. It was um, denied by the town council. So Ed Ciccarello and I went back to the drawing maps, so to speak. And the criteria that the, the DEEP wants is open spaces, historical areas, maybe archaeological significance. It's not just, you know, one big trail in the woods. So we came up with this, as, and I won't spend a lot of time on it. You can see it connects Dividend, which has archaeological significance, open spaces. You can go up Dividend Road to Buckley Park, which is open space. Back down, um, and in going down Pratt Street, you could also, and it, it comes along right before Pratt, and you come along the Center Cemetery, which is also historic. And then you can go down Pratt and hook up Riverview, which has Ship, Shipman's Park, which is another notable point. Torrey Park, beautiful, um, huge hiking area. And then you can double back and come down to Ferry Park, which is notably historic, oldest ferry in the country, continually operating. And then just make a jag down to Sewillow Park. So we came up with this, and if you look at it, um, there's a lot of documentation on the history, town history, the different park histories. We submitted it, I submitted it to contact I've made at the DEEP Greenway Committee to make sure this would work before submitting to the town council so that we didn't want to spin our wheels. She said, looks good. We submitted to the town council, went through a rather significant <laughs> grilling, I'll be honest, by the council. Uh, and then they approved it. They unanimously approved it. So then we had to get a resolution from the mayor and this and sent it off to the Greenways Committee and October 22nd, they voted on it and they approved it. So now we are on the map. They have a beautiful interactive map. Um, so we got it approved. So, you know, it's it's taken a while, but we're real happy, mostly for Rocky Hill, because this is this is for n notorious, no, it's notoriety for Rocky Hill to be included, to show we've got green Greenway, we've got open spaces, we've got history, we've got archeology. span and um, that's, that's what we've done. So we have a Greenway. And next year they, they make awards and you get signs, Greenway signs. And it's, I think it's on Trails Day, which is the first weekend in June generally. So the town will be acknowledged next year. And we'll go on the map. And that's, that's my speech. Okay, that was, that was my Thank first you. question was going to be, are there going to be signs? But they have nice signs. I've seen them over at uh, Goodwin, the, the trails at Goodwin on the east side of the river, yes. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Sandy about that or? No, just uh, thank you, Sandy. And um, thank Ed Ciccarello too. Definitely tell Okay. All right, moving on. F, legislation. None. Uh, G, conferences. None. None and none. All right, number seven, correspondence, communications. None. None, other than the letter that was make, discussed. I didn't know if it was none or if you had a big stack <laughs> and you were getting none, ready. None. Other business anyone has? All right, hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right, all those in favor of adjourning, aye. 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 All right, I'll see you all next month um, for the public hearing. Um, with that, um, have a good night. <laughs>